So because of investment we're making, even although we don't have power over it, nobody in Scotland is having to pay the bedroom tax. We've established a Scottish welfare fund. So the record we have and all of the evidence says we use our powers well and we'll use any additional powers well too. But nevertheless, there are criticisms. I mean, for example, the fact that uh, elderly patients and, and normal patients indeed uh, are, 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 have gone up unable to go home, 200,000 in 2011, 620,000 unable to go home on time uh, in the present year. Well, we have made progress in reducing delayed discharges, which is what you're talking about. Like, I think you know, the NHS faces changing demographics and ever-increasing demand. We've got to make sure we equip the NHS for that. But if I look at 2007 when the SNP took office, and I know it well because I was health secretary at the time, you know, the target waiting time for inpatient and day case treatment in Scotland was 18 weeks. 85% of people were seen within that target. Today, the target is 12 weeks and 95% of people are seen within that target. So we've made considerable progress, but we're determined to go further and do even better. Now, is it your ambition, I know you don't know what you're going to get, but is it your ambition to alleviate the consequences of the effects of the benefit cuts on lowest paid workers? I want to alleviate the impact of welfare cuts as much as I can. I'm not going to promise that we can do that completely because what we are getting, and remember I've said we have to see the detail, will be limited welfare powers and very, very limited taxation powers. So I'm not going to promise things I can't deliver, but the record of the SNP government thus far has been to do whatever we can to alleviate the impact on the vulnerable and on working families that have been hit very hard, and that's what we're And if you get the to. money, how would it be paid for? Supposing you get about, would it be paid by raising income tax? Well, we will do what we've always done as a government. You know, I lead a government now, Alex Hammond led it before me, that has balanced the books every single year we've been in government. Now, people say we don't have a choice, but nevertheless, that takes a lot of discipline. We look at our priorities, we set our priorities and we manage our budget to deliver them. Now, even with additional powers, that's still the approach we'll take to government. It's a responsible, good government approach, but one that is very firmly focused on helping those who need it most. Now, of course, you are pro-European. Will you campaign unequivocally for Britain to stay yes. in Europe? You say yes, but of course, by doing so, you could be delaying the opportunity to have another referendum which would uh, result in independence. But I act as a politician. I know this may be difficult for people to believe politicians. It's a situation. Do you know what? I, I, I judge all my actions as best I can based on what I think is best for the country at any given time, not on some kind of Machiavellian judgment of what's in my own best interest. I think it would be wrong for Scotland and the UK to leave the European Union. I don't think it's perfect as an institution. I think it's right for reform in many ways. But I think our interests are best served by being within it. That's why I'll campaign for Scotland and the UK to stay in. Nicola Sturgeon, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. We'll be back with more from here in Aberdeen. But for now, back to Cathy in the studio for more of the day's news.